Hello and welcome to the Aragon Analytics review of the primary arms 1 to 6 by 24 scope with the ACSS reticle calibrated for 7.62 by 39 and 300 blackout. I uh, just want to get some technical details kind of out of the way. Uh, it is an illuminated second focal plane scope, meaning that the the reticle or aiming point is uh, illuminated and that the reticle itself uh, stays the same size as you move through the magnification range of 1 to 6. The objective diameter is 24 millimeters, tube diameter is 30 millimeters, and the uh, adjustments for the scope are done in one half MOA increments. Uh, the weight of the scope is uh, 15.52 ounces, so right around a pound. And it's currently retailing on Primary Arms' website for $289. Uh, when you first get the scope, it comes in this relatively attractive uh, box here. Uh, it's well packed, uh, arrived safely with no problems. Uh, for my particular scope, I opted uh, for the uh, 7.62 by 39 calibration for the uh, ACSS reticle that we'll talk about in a few minutes because my plan was to put it on a AKM uh, type rifle in the 7.62 by 39 caliber although uh, this uh, reticle calibration will also work for uh, 300 blackout. Uh, this particular mounting system is the excellent RS Regulate uh, system which is basically a a two-piece system for AK rifles that allows you to clamp this bottom portion onto a sighting rail and then you choose from among several different uh, top portions whether you're whether you just need a small section to mount a red dot or a long section of Picatinny rail to mount a scope that's up to you and then it uh, screws into the uh, base of the mount with Allen head uh, screws and you can also additionally stake those uh, if uh, Loctite is not enough. I found that in my shooting I'll kind of skip ahead to performance in regard to the mount at least and and also partly to the scope. Uh, the wonderful part about this RS Regulate mount is because it is so rigid and because it has this uh, this tensioning screw on the bottom here it allows you to get a really precise fit on those AK uh, scope rails and uh, then lock it down here and I found in my shooting much to my surprise that it didn't just hold close to zero it held zero granted I was only shooting out to a hundred yards uh, that particular outing at that particular outdoor range but if I I can take this thing on and off four or five times during the course of shooting after after it was zeroed and it retains zero out to a hundred as well as it did I'm thrilled so that essentially means that uh, you know I can run the, the rifle with the iron sights without this uh, without this on it if that's that's what I want to do and I'll get into why that is the way I want to run the rifle the majority of the time a little later on when we discuss the reticle and the the optics uh, quality and and whether or not this is a truly 1x scope. Uh, the scope is illuminated as I said there's a illumination dial here and as very positive uh, they're not really clicks they're more like thuds but they they are uh, not easily bounced around meaning this is not likely to turn itself on or off on its own just by pulling it in and out of a range bag or banging it against something. It's a very robust uh, mechanism uh, with uh, settings from 1 all the way up to 11, just like Spinal Tap. So you can see here it's powered by the very common CR2032 batteries that you can find anywhere including your local Walgreens or Walmart or Kmart or what have you. They're inexpensive. Uh, I haven't been able to get some really specific uh, run times for a, a 2032 battery in this scope but you know the good news is if you run out of illumination power the reticle is etched 
into the glass, so you don't need any power to run the scope. The only purpose of having that illumination is if you have a, a, a low contrast background that you're shooting at or a low light situation, it would be helpful to have the illumination. But my way of thinking is uh, if you're shooting at something that's so shrouded in darkness that you cannot see this reticle, you probably should not be shooting at what you're shooting at. Uh, so overall, I'd say the, the quality of the scope is excellent. I wasn't really thrilled with the weight. Um, a pound, I mean, it is a bit of a chunk, uh, but it does seem to be very robust, well made. Um, I realize that these are not the best rings to be using. I needed to get this evaluation done. It's what I had on hand at time. These are ARMS uh, 30 millimeter uh, QD rings with a little throw lever here. They're heavy steel rings. Uh, I will be changing these out to a more lightweight aluminum uh, scope ring when I get the chance. Uh, as I mentioned, you have your windage and elevation turrets right where you would expect them to be. Um, they have uh, one half MOA adjustments and absolutely zero problems with those. Uh, one neat thing is uh, one of the caps is equipped with a uh, little storage area for an extra battery, which I thought was a cool and neat touch. And because I'm running, it's normal, it normally comes on the windage side, but I just kind of switched them around because as I'm uh, running that AK rifle, I this uh, higher uh, scope cap or, or adjustment knob cap height was kind of coming close to interfering with me running the running the bolt on the uh, on the AK rifle, so I just switched to the to, to the top, and you know zero problems there. Uh, On to the optics quality, uh, pretty clear glass for the you know two hundred and eighty nine dollar price tag. Uh, not quite as clear as some of my Leupold or, or Trigicon optics, uh, but I would say uh, you're getting more than what you're paying for as far as optics clarity. Uh, the one ding I'll give the uh, optic right off the bat is it is not a true one power optic. Uh, meaning when you when you look through the through the eyepiece here, the bell, whatever you want to call it, uh, if you're if you keep that eye, if you shut that eye and look at your uh, non dom through your non dominant eye. Uh, not looking through the scope, there is a difference. Uh, there is a slight degree of magnification. So if you're planning on buying the scope as a red dot substitute or a red dot that never runs out of power because it's glass etched, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. I'd say, if, you know, a ballpark estimate, the true magnification at the number one setting is probably at around one and a third. Uh, it's close but no cigar there is a difference so two eyes open shooting uh, doesn't feel right you can still use that bend in aiming principle that all the ACOG folks use but you know that kind of defeats the purpose of a true having a true one power optic uh, granted I have yet to find any scope that is a tr absolute true one power uh, the possible exception to that uh, or what's come closest to that true one X are uh, what I consider to be the best uh, scope for an intermediate range uh, cartridge or an intermediate cartridge uh, in a carbine and that is the uh, Trigicon AccuPoint. I have two of those and they're freaking magnificent and they come uh, so close to 1x uh, magnification that you are able to to shoot with both eyes open. So CQB you can do that with this um, but due to the reticle size, which I'll, uh, in a couple seconds here, I'll try and roll in a uh, little uh, video of the reticle if I can manage to get it through the video camera. It's kind of tricky uh, getting that to work, but I'll give it a shot here in a minute. But the, the reticle size is somewhat smallish, uh, and uh, the change in magnification from what you're seeing with your left eye and what you're seeing with your right eye it's not as fast as using irons, not a, definitely not as fast as using a red dot. 
but it is quicker than using like a three to nine X hunting scope or something like that. So I don't want to sound like I don't like this scope. It's actually uh, quite a good value, uh, but it does have its limitations and that slight magnification at the one X setting uh, is, is a limitation. The other limitation, as I said, is the reticle size. Now onto the reticle, um, I'm going to try and on the, uh, on the packaging, they actually give you a very nice uh, representation of the reticle and uh, what you can see here is this uh, this chevron at the top that's your main aiming point so you're gonna zero that for uh, 50 yards and then once you get that zeroed in at 50 yards the bottom uh, the the little angle directly beneath the tip that will be your hundred yard and then you can see how the increments go down further uh, on this side, you'll see a, a range estimation uh, portion of the reticle. That'll only work at magna maximum magnification, meaning you have to have it set at 6x. Then you have these really nifty and handy uh, lead holdovers uh, that are calibrated for the average human being, you know, running at combat speed. And then you have your wind holdovers, etc. Overall, these ACSS reticles are. Uh, really, uh, I would say, really useful. They're not uh, overly cluttered when you look through the optic. Uh, like I said, they are kind of smallish, but you know, you have to kind of take the good with the bad. And uh, in order to have the the range estimation and all all these other little hash marks and dots and everything work properly, that that reticle has to be at a certain certain size at a if you're dealing with a second focal plane scope. So real quick I'm going to try and uh, roll in a couple images of what the uh, reticle looks like through the scope. So just hang out for a second and I'll be right back. Hey guys, a quick correction on the comment I made on the reticle. Uh, when you're zeroing this uh, scope, like I said, this top portion of the chevron is going to be your 50 yard zero, which will also be roughly on at 200. The bottom portion is not going to be at 100. I, what I meant to say was actually that that will be at, uh, at 250, that uh, bottom portion right here uh, where the chevron meets up that'll be your 250. Your 100 yard mark is actually going to be slightly high if you zero this at, uh, at 50 for the tip of the chevron. So just wanted to make that clear and we'll move on with the rest of the video here. Okay, hopefully that came through fairly well. Uh, anyway, to wrap it up or to summarize, uh, this is a good value scope. It seems relatively uh, robust, it's capable, the optic is uh, very clear glass for the money. Uh, the downside is it's not a true 1x and it has a smallish reticle. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is uh, the in the uh, footage I'm going to try to roll in, uh, I had the reticle set at maximum uh, brightness on a uh, against a like bright sunshiny outdoor background. Uh, the illumination's adequate. It's not something uh, that that I would consider really outstanding, but for this price point, uh, I gotta give this thing a, a pretty strong recommendation, provided that you accept the limitation of the uh, not quite true one uh, X and that magnification range of uh, one and a third or whatever it really is up to six X is a very usable, practical uh, range that I enjoy <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, it, it is ideally suited for use on an AK-type rifle. I don't have a 300 blackout, so AR or anything, so I really can't count them in on the 300 blackout. But as far as the, uh, the, the 7.62 by 39 ammo, uh, the Wolf stuff that I usually shoot through my rifle, uh, it, uh, I was able to, you know, give a good evaluation of the accuracy of the rifle I was using it on. 
it held zero well. The RS Regulate mount is excellent. Uh, I can't recommend that highly enough. They are a bit pricey, but there isn't anything else that allows you the ability and flexibility to choose different tops to align the uh, top part of the mount to correctly center your optic on top of your particular AK rifle and AKs do vary slightly in dimensions and sometimes you'll buy a mount where the scope will be kind of offset a little bit in relation to the top of the gun or lining it up with the barrel. This allows you to mount the optic you want on the rifle that you want to mount it on rigidly and securely with a repeatable zero. Absolute A plus for RS Regulate and you know maybe like a B plus uh, a good solid B plus for the for the primary arms optic so anyway uh, thanks uh, for coming by to take a look at this scope and mounting option and uh, we'll see you in the next video take care